welcome wonderful viewers welcome and thank you very much for tuning in we really appreciate uh, you tuning in and i trust that uh, all is well with you remember we're laboring on the theme peace in the midst of the storm and i trust that uh, the lord is good the lord is keeping you and we are journeying through and sailing through to the other side and remember friends you know many a time one thing that uh, will help you make it in life is to know that there is the other side while you're on the side where things are tough, things are harsh, things are not favorable, you must know there is the other side. But I know that it's not th easy to think that way, more especially when the side you are at is tough and things are not happening the way you desire for them to happen. But I just want to remind you that there is the other side. Jesus said to his disciples when the night came, he said, let us go over to the other side. And they took him along. I love this, uh, 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 what it, it, it's recorded there, where it says, you know what, they left the crowds. And to me, just leaving the crowd says something very important, that in this life, you don't only live in the crowd. While everybody else is very much important because we don't live in an island, we need other people who also contribute in our lives while we're contributing in their lives. But it's important for you to know that you don't necessarily live in the crowd. In other words, we must know that uh, we are made in solitude and then we manifest what we are in the crowd. That is why before the flashing lights, uh, you know, on stage and where you are crowd, you must know that uh, there's a lot of work that is done. I always say uh, as South Africans before our own uh, 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 Seminia, you know, when before she, she, she wraps off her shoulders and show her strength, I want you to know that before that, she has done quite a lot in secret. Before Usain Bolt also stretches himself, there's a lot that was done in secret. Don't be fooled to think that it just happens when in the crowding. No, in fact, the battle is not won when you are crowned, but it is won in preparation. And that is what we're talking about, friends, when we say, as we go over to the other side, while you're on this side where you're not very happy about it, but as we go over to the other side, there's going to be a lot that is going to happen. You'll have even to pull out from the crowd. But you know what? You must know that by the time you get to the other side, a lot of great things shall have been formed in you. That's why what we say, what does not kill you? It makes you strong. And that's very true because, you know, there are, uh, it, life itself will give you a school that is going to refine you, that is going to prepare you. And every season of life, I must be honest, every season, regardless of how it is, might be so bad. But I want you to know it has got something good. It brings something good. It's like a coin. You have to look at the other side, flip the coin and check the other side. You might find that even as the Chinese says, crisis also means opportunity and that's very true you know even during this uh, 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 fight against uh, this pandemic you realize that you know china fought and the next thing now they want to have an uh, make it an opportunity you know they want to come up with something that now they can sell to the world and i'm saying to us you know what always there is the other side so don't die on the side that is not favorable. Don't die on the side that is terrorizing and, and fighting against you. Always know that there is the other side. You know what? I want just to talk to you today about the power of something that is very small, and that is the power of the seed. A seed is a very powerful thing. But I want to start by asking you, you know, or, or saying to you, you know, the ideal atmosphere for one to die. I mean dying. Uh, you know, the ideal atmosphere for one to die is to have family surrounding you, you know, saying their bye-byes, crying, you know, and all, and all that. But can you imagine on your deathbed, instead of family surrounding you, but the ideas that you never actualize, the dreams that you never pursued, you know, the visions that you never pursued, standing around you, looking at you with red, angry eyes and saying to you, we're given to you so that we can manifest and become great things. But today we have to die with you forever, you know. And this is very true of many people who pass 
this life or who die in this life. You know, there are dreams that they never realize. There are books they never wrote, like Dr. Miles Monroe will say. You know, there are lots of great things that they could have brought out or bring out of themselves, but they died with it. And that's how painful it is. So I want you to know, please, don't be one of those who will have dreams, who will have ideas, who will have visions that are going to look at you with angry eyes when you're on your deathbed and said, you are good for nothing. Today we have to die with you forever. I want you to do exactly what uh, Dr. Miles said, uh, my great mentor, when he said, you have to empty yourself and die empty. So when I talk about the seed, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about making sure that what is in the seed is released. It comes out. You know, I want to read a scripture with you in the book of Genesis chapter number 1, verses 11 and 12. The scripture reads here in the New Living Translation. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, every sort of seed-bearing plant and or plant and trees that grow seeds bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants that and trees which are just like themselves. And then it goes on to say, and that is what happened. Exactly. That's what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seeds bearing plants, and uh, trees with seed bearing fruit, this, uh, their seeds produced plants and trees um, of the same kind. And it went on and on and on and on. What am I trying to say? Friends, have you realized that every great thing that God does, it does not come in its fullest capacity. It does not come fully matured or grown. Even when he gave us the Messiah, the Deliverer, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, many expected the Messiah to come flying from heaven and said, No, that's not what happened. You know, he was born of the Virgin Mary and he was laid in a manger looking very weak and very helpless, but being the savior of the world. Why? Because God sent him into the serpent in the, in the garden. He said, the seed of the woman will bruise your head, the seed. You know, not uh, the, 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 the full grown or uh, the, the Messiah. No, God just said the seed because he knew that it is going to come through the seed. When you look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, you know, you, you, you ask yourself, why this begat that, that begat that, and that begat that? You know what? That's a trace of a seed, the trace of the seed. And I want you to know that uh, God introduced the principle of a seed, and it's a very powerful principle, the seed. And that is why I want us to look at the seed because it says in the seed, like Dr. Miles will say, you know, if you hold a seed in your hand and ask, ask people, what is this? Those who want to ask just obviously give you an obvious answer will say, no, it's a seed. But if you stop and think that is really that a seed is, the, is really all uh, what I see in this little tiny thing, or is there something bigger, something greater, something different? But the truth is that in that one seed, there are great things. In that one thing, seed, uh, according to the scripture that we have read, in that seed there is a tree. And in that tree, there are also uh, 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 seeds because it, it, the Bible says seed bearing or fruit bearing trees that has seed inside the fruit. So there is, a, there is a tree, there is a fruit, but there is a seed. Now, in one little tiny seed, be it a mango seed, but you know what? In it, there is a tree. And in the tree, there are fruits. Not one, but many fruits. And with those many fruits inside them, there is a seed. So you can choose to take that seed, throw it away. You can choose to take that seed and just 
not do anything about it. Or you can choose to make it a decoration and even spray some paint on it and put it on top of your table. And it will stay there as a seed. You know, I heard lately that archaeologists, out of their curiosity, they got a seed in one of the pyramids of Egypt. And they got a seed. And that suggests that the, that, that seed might be dating almost 2,000 years back. And out of curiosity, they planted the seed. And guess what? The seed germinated. That's a seed for you. When you put it uh, uh, on, on a solid ground, when you don't give it the right atmosphere, it will remain just a tiny little thing which looks useless. But give it the right atmosphere, the seed will bring to begin to open up and become exactly what it is. But am I just talking about a seed? Am I just interested in talking about a seed? No, because you and I are a seed, you know? You know you, do you remember our conception? I don't want to go that line, but you know that uh, there's been a race. Before you were conceived, there's been a race. You were not just born by mistake. You know, you were competing with many other seeds that were supposed to, be, to have been fertilized. But you are the one who got fertilized and look at it today. But I want you to know that the reason God allowed for your conception is because you carry more than we can imagine. In Tonga, you know, I love this because there is a fish, I think it's a whale, which we call Nkababanga Heit, you know, you cannot finish it, you can't, you cannot finish it. And that is true of you. He went and Nkababanga Heit, you know, you are so loaded that the world, it, if you just release yourself and bring out yourself, the world will become a better place. Just you, you alone, you know, you carry so much in you. Unfortunately, as much as we look down upon a seed, as much as sometimes we don't relate to a seed and understand its greatness, only farmers understand, you know, I've got two farmers that I love the most. One of them is uh, uh, Mr. Churchill Thais, you know, uh, this old man. I love him so much because he's a great farmer. He's a great farmer and he's a teacher or a trainer, an educator, uh, you know, um, uh, because one day I interviewed a gentleman by Mr. Tutan Rivisi, and uh, when I interviewed this man, uh, in fact, I interviewed uh, Mr. Churchill Thais, and uh, Mr. Tutan Rivisi had the interview, and he thought, no, Pastor Strike, if you could me hook me up with this old man, I would love to meet this old man, and I hooked them up, and uh, he told the old man that, look, I have a desire to go into farming. And the old man said, good, you know, I'm looking for young men who will be interested in farming because I am old, but I have this vast of knowledge. I would love to share it with some young men so that they can carry it forward. And guess what? You know what? Today, we talk of Mr. Tutan Rivis in just maybe two, three years. He is a great commercial farmer in the hands of this great old man, Tatana Churchill Thais. And we say, Papa, thank you so very much for being such a blessing in our, in, in our days. And, you know, he continues to say, where are young men? Where are young women? Because I don't want to die with this knowledge. You know, it's like he knows what Dr. Miles Monroe said when he said, please die empty. The old man is about emptying himself. Just two, three days ago, he called me and said, Hey, Pastor Strike, please, I see a lot of shops of our, of our fathers and our mothers. You know, they are rented out to uh, different people. It's like their sons and daughters cannot run these businesses. You know, please, can we do something? Can we, in, can we encourage this young man to be able to carry the, the legacy, to be able to carry that which their fathers left for them? You know what? That's a great old man. And I'm saying to you, you know what? That old man at his age... Still, there is more in him and he wants to release it. He wants to take it out. And I love his spirit. I love his attitude of wanting to take it out. And I'm saying to you, my dear brother and sister, you and I are a seed. You know, we are conceived because of a seed. But at the very same time, being a product of a seed, you also in you, as the scripture said, you also are having a fruit in you which carries a seed. That is to say, not only when we talk of biological multiply, multiplication, but we're talking of you releasing the greatness that is logged in you, releasing the power that is in you. And we're talking about a seed. And I'm saying to you, my friend, is all what we see in you, about you, all there is? No. I want to believe there's more where it came from. 
Do you, have you succeeded? Have you done so great and so wonderful that people are applauding you? I want you to know you have done nothing yet compared to what is still in you. And that is why when I look at um, this global pandemic and look at um, the lockdown and the like, while many people might be complaining and thinking, yo, this lockdown, this... I want you to know it's time for you to look into yourself. It's time for you to look into what God has deposited in you. It is time for you to take, to take an inventory and, and start researching on yourself, visiting facets in you, visiting rooms in yourself which you have never visited before. You know, I always say, uh, you know, sometimes you need a, a mad dog to see how fast you can run or how high you can jump. You know, if COVID-19 is that mad dog, so be it, so that you see what is logged in you, so that you see the power that is in you, so that you see the great gift things, the great talents and abilities that God has put in you. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the power of the seed. The seed has got so much power, but you know what? This seed which has so much power, it needs one, number one, to know that God does things through seeds. You know, God introduces great things through seeds. I've seen it in the scriptures, one scripture after the other. You know, when Israel was in Egypt for over 400 years, and God said, I heard the cry and the groanings of my people which are in Egypt because of their taskmasters. You know what? And he said, I've come to deliver them. You think... Uh, God, uh, 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 you know, he went looking for a superman coming flying. No, Moses was born. And when Moses was born, as if the mother knew, but she knew nothing. All she did was to say, I cannot surrender my son to be slaughtered. And she said, I'll do all it takes to protect my son. She was just a loving mother. She was just a caring mother. She put a life in danger for the life of her son. That is true of mothers, you know. That's true of mothers as mothers are. Not when we talk of ab abnormalities where, you know, uh, mothers will, will kill their own children. No, a mother will put their lives on the block for their own children. And that's what this uh, lady did. And the boy grew and the boy was crying nye, nye, because he does not know that, hey, this crying is inviting trouble for you. And the old lady thought, but what can we do? And they uh, constructed a, a, a small onion a boat for him and put it in the river Nile. And the sister was checking while playing with other kids. I also love this family because this family is like they knew the power of a seed, you know, because even the sister Miriam, she's playing with other girls. But you know what? While playing, her ear is listening to the brother. While playing, the eye is looking at the brother because she knew I must take care of my brother. And boom, the, 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 the daughter's king comes to the river and discovered the boy. And when they discovered the boy, guess what? The girl quickly said, thought to herself, what can I do? And she thought, all right, let me just go closer. She went closer and said, whoa, what a beautiful baby. And uh, she, she could see that they just discovered the baby. And she said, um, if you don't mind, I can get you a woman or I can get you a nanny to take care of the baby. What a good idea. You know, she gave the princess an idea and the princess grabbed it. Why? Because God Almighty is behind every movement of our lives. Even when it's like you're getting into danger, you're getting into trouble. But I want you to know God has a way of using everything, using everything, you know, to build a pedestal for you, to build a platform for you to manifest yourself and to manifest. Why manifest yourself? Not just for yourself, but manifest his glory. You know, some of us and some of you guys watching, you have survived some horrible things. Some of the things you cannot even tell how you came out, but you know what? You came out alive and well. Why? Because God wanted you to have a testimony that you know what? God is able. So the, the princess agreed and she went to the mother and said, Mama, you listen to me and listen very carefully. The boy is discovered. And I said to them, I'm going to look for a nanny. So you are nanny. You are not Moses' mother. Do you get that? And then he was not even called Moses. I don't know what his name was called because this, this name Moses was given by uh, the, the, the princess. And that's what happened. What was God doing? You know, the boy is born, kept. 
and protected, put in the river, and the next thing, the boy is discovered, and the mother becomes the nanny, and the boy is growing. But you know what? Because God was waking something, he knew that this seed, through this seed, I'm going to, uh, there was going to be an explosion in Egypt. Egypt will see what they've never seen before through this seed. And that is why the Bible says, when Moses became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. And that is why, after over 400 years of slavery, a Moses that was born, a Moses that was just a baby, became a deliverer. I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what God has put in you, but I can tell you what God has put in you is so massive, is so great that if Moses took Israel out of Egypt, I want you to, I don't know who, which nation you're going to take out. Maybe you are the one who must take South Africa to a better side of it. Maybe you are the one who must take our economy to the better side. Maybe you are the one who must take even the church to the better side. I'm saying this, friends, not to make you feel good, but I'm telling you this because this is true. You carry something of great uh, significance. You carry something very unique. You carry something very powerful. And you just need to know that God gives you all these things in a form of a seed. So don't undermine a seed. Don't look down upon a seed. And maybe I should even say, when I talk of seeds, I'm not just talking of a, 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 a seed of, or a plant seed uh, only. But here I'm talking about you. You are a seed. And there is, there is a lot that God has put in you as a seed. And when we talk about that, we're talking even about ideas. Did you know that God, like I said the other day, that of... Uh, 60,000 thoughts that run in our minds. And as these thoughts are running, I want you to know that there are ideas that crosses our minds every day, crosses our minds. And you don't think that those ideas, they just come to kiss you and say, hello. No, those ideas have co are coming because God knows that in you, there's that power. In you, there's that something that can convert this uh, idea into something great. Did you know every big thing that you have ever seen, it was an idea in somebody's mind. I must be honest with you. It was an idea. The iPad was an idea. Cameras were ideas in somebody's mind. And you can, can you imagine if there were no cameras? Can you imagine? I, I, I think I'm a little bit old enough. I lived in the era where there was no phone, no, no cell phones. You know, I even asked myself, how did we survive? <laughs> you know, because you, you needed a, a, a landline. And I remember where I was living in Guyana, there were no lines for telecom. And because of that, when a cell phone came, man, I bought the first one. And people said, hey, you know, Pastor Strike, what other deal? These things will burst in your, in your ear. Because, you know, every time uh, change comes, people receive it with fear and trembling. But you know what? Change is very necessary. Because change takes you to places you have never been. You know, change introduces something and, it, you know, it, it opens doors that you have never seen before. That is why you're a little bit uh, 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 unsettled. But don't allow it to immobilize you to an extent that you do not uh, zoom in and see the best that is in change. But can you imagine the world without, without a cell phone? Today, you know, we communicate. Today, you, we communicate through all these gadgets. Like I said the other day with guys like Mark Zuckerberg who came with Facebook and all these guys, you know. Um, you know, Google, you know, all these things. Hey, there were ideas in somebody's mind. And I must be honest with you, friends. Like I always say, we all are beneficiaries of, of other people's ideas. But while we're benefiting from the ideas of other people, from the seeds of other people that were converted, that were given an opportunity to break open and to bring out that, was, that which was locked up in them, we also owe the world. You owe me and I owe you. We owe our children. We owe our children's children. What kind of a future are we giving to our children? What kind of a tomorrow are we giving to our children? Do we go through life with our eyes closed and say, No, we are supposed to do something. We are supposed to create something. We are supposed to birth something that is going to make sure that tomorrow becomes a better tomorrow. And that thing is not far-fetched. It's right in you, my brother. It's right in you, my sister. The power of a seed. The seed has a tree in it. And with a tree in it, 
it has also fruits in it. With fruits in it, it has got also seeds in it. And from generation to generation, a tree can manifest. You know one thing I, I love and appreciate every time I go back to my home village? You know, things have shifted, people have built, but there are those trees that are still there. You know, uh, uh, sometimes I just wa love walking around the, the, the bush where we used to take care of livestock, you know, and see those old trees, you know, how faithful they are, still standing. And I found those trees there. I left Bungen and the trees are still there. Wow. So friends, don't undermine the power of a seed. And in the next sessions, I would love for us to open even more. Yes, we see the power of the seed. But then what do we do? God bless you. And remember, family, remember, this is very much important. While we're fighting COVID-19, stay at home if you are not one of the essential workers. And make sure that you wash your hands regularly. And make sure, make sure that you use your mask and make sure that you sanitize. Social distance is very much important. Remember, you keep yourself safe, you're keeping your family safe. And you're keeping the nation safe. I pray for you now. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for this opportunity to communicate something of substance, something of encouragement to my brother, to my sister, to this family, to this couple, to this young man, this young woman, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to realize that, Lord, you have capsuled our lives. You have capsuled great things in a form of a seed in us. And I thank you, God, and I bless you, my Father. And as I pray now, I want to lift our government. I lift, Lord, our president, his cabinet. I lift before you, precious Lord, all our doctors, all our MECs, all those on essential services, my Lord and God, health workers. I pray for them, my Lord and God, in this time, that you'll keep them strong, that you'll protect them, that it will be well with them and their families. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, bless your family until we meet next time. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you.